Today, big consequences as the inflation higher for longer drama plays out as expected. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, notice post covering finance and property news. Well, now we know. While the annual Australian headline inflation rate slipped to 2.8%, which is just within the RBA's target of 2 to 3%, from 3.8% in the June quarter, and by the way, it's the lowest since March 2021, underlying inflation remains well above the RBA's 2 to 3% target band at 3.5%, which is in line with forecasts. Annual goods inflation was just 1.4%, down from 3.2% in the June quarter. And the trimmed mean measure of consumer prices, which smooths out volatile items, rose 0.8% in the three months through to September, matching estimates. But services inflation rose to 4.6% from 4.5% last time around. This is the price of all those things you can't drop on your foot. The biggest culprits were rent insurance, education, and medical, dental, and hospital services costs. Education prices were up 6.4%, and the cost of taking pets to the vet rose by 5.8% in the year to September, while the price of a haircut went up 6.3%, and the cost of a visit to the mechanic rose by 4.3%. The common theme is wages growth. Rental prices rose 6.7% over the 12 months to the September quarter, down from 7.3% in the June quarter, as it continues to reflect low vacancy rates and a tight rental market. The rate of annual growth in rental prices has been moderated by changes to the Commonwealth Rent Assistance Programme. The maximum rate available for the CRA increased by 10% in September 2024, in addition to the usual biannual CPI indexation on the 20th of March and the 20th of September each year. This follows an additional increase in the CRA maximum rate of 15% in September last year. But this remains, of course, another government support measure, as increases in the CRA in 2023 and 2024 have reduced the amount of rent payable by eligible recipients. Excluding those changes to CRA, rents would have increased by 8.5% over the 12 months to the September 2024 quarter. New dwelling purchases by owner-occupiers rose 1% as builders continue to pass on higher labour and building materials costs. And property costs continue to rise as, for example, rates rose 4.9%. That's the largest rise since 2014, as councils typically review their rates once per year, which is usually in the September quarter. And we also saw steep rises in insurance costs and some foods, while petrol prices fell thanks to lower oil prices. But electricity bills fell 17.3% over the past three months as households received their first quarterly instalment of a temporary $300 federal government energy rebate, as well as generous state-level grants, including a one-off $1,000 power bill discount in Queensland and a $300 subsidy in Western Australia. Trouble is... Federal support measures are only temporary, and so the RBA looks through them when considering the true path of inflation. While utilities fell 7.6%, driven by electricity down 17.3%, there were rises in gas and other household fuels up 7.3%, and water and sewage up 2.7%, so those offset the fall. Excluding those rarest rebates, in fact, electricity prices would have risen 0.7% across the quarter as retailers in some capital cities increase supply and usage charges for market and standing offer plans. But gas and other household fuel prices rose due to annual price reviews, reflecting higher network and wholesale gas costs, and water and sewage prices rose following annual price reviews. The price of Brent crude, the global benchmark for oil prices, fell 8.4% over the past year to $71 US, as weakened demand from China outstripped concerns about potential supply disruptions caused by conflict in the Middle East. This explains the fall in petrol prices. Automotive fuel prices in the December quarter were 6.2% lower compared to the September 2023 quarter. Petrol prices have fallen in four of the past five months as lower global demand has seen a fall in oil and wholesale fuel prices. The average price of unleaded petrol for the December 24 quarter 
was $1.84 per litre, which is 13 cents per litre lower than the September 2023 quarter. So all of these numbers are broadly in line with the RBA's inflation outlook. Governor Michelle Bullock said in the bank's annual report released a couple of weeks ago that she anticipated it will take another year or two before consumer prices are sustainably back within the 2-3% band. We need to see that there's a consistent trend down to the inflation target band and it's going to stay in the band rather than dip in and out, the RBA said. And of course, they'll release a new round of economic forecasts on Tuesday together with its policy decision. The result should reinforce the Albert existing view that inflation won't be sustainably inside the target band for a while yet, suggesting limited changes in its quarterly forecast next week. As a result of all this, investors increasingly expect the Reserve Bank will not start cutting interest rates until perhaps May next year, meaning that the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, would have to fight almost an entire election campaign with voters still buckling under the pressure of 13 rate rises. With voters marking down the government over its handling of the cost of living, Labour is still hoping the decline in inflation will be enough to sway the RBA to cut the cash rate early next year. Even this Commonwealth Bank changed its tune on potential rate cuts, becoming the final major forecaster to dump predictions of a rate cut this year. CBA has been the bank still forecasting a rate cut for most of the year after months of Bethany expected economic data forced its competitors to push their own rate calls out into 2025. NAB and ANZ dumped their November 24 call in June, while Westpac revised it back in August. A rate cut in February is by no means a done deal, as the RBA could still judge annual trimmed mean inflation of 3.5% is sufficiently good progress in reducing inflation to justify a rate cut this early, absent of more notable weakening in the labour market, Beta Shares Chief Economist David Bassanese said. And bond market investors pushed back their timing for the first rate cut to the RBA's 20th of May meeting from its April the 1st gathering, the timing of the first 0.25 percentage point reduction has been shifting between April and May over the past couple of weeks. The latest likely date, and the election can be held, by the way, is May. The economists are more optimistic than bond market investors, with the average economist still tipping a rate cut at the RBA's February 18th meeting. But City Chief Economist Josh Williamson said the risks of delayed easing cycle has grown due to the strength of the jobs market and the ongoing rise in the price of consumer services. Anyway, cue the spin doctors, as Treasurer Jim Chalmers said the figures show the economy was back on track for a soft landing, arguing that inflation was falling broadly and not simply a result of government energy subsidies. Dr Chalmers and Finance Minister Katie Gallagher have hinted that they might even provide further household support in the lead up to the federal election. Yeah, another bribe incoming. Not that it did the Queensland Labour government much good recently as it lost its hold on power because people saw it for what it was. The RBA expects inflation to jump back to 3.7% late next year when the state and federal government energy rebates expire. And the IMF recently estimated that Australia would have an average inflation rate next year of around 3.8%. That's one of the highest on their list. ACTU boss Sally McManus demanded the RBA start cutting the cash rate immediately, citing the decline in inflation as evidence the economy needed support. Australia's families have spent three and a half years shouldering the financial hardship that has come with the need to put the brakes on inflation, she said. But Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor said Australia was at the back of the pack dealing with inflation and accused Dr Chalmer of trying to hoodwink the RBA by using energy subsidies to temporarily reduce inflation. Now, my survey shows Australians are indeed doing it tough. And our biggest supermarket, Woolworths, made the case again on Wednesday morning, warning investors that it was lowering the prices to clear its shelves. Chief Executive Amanda Bardwell's first words to shareholders were, our customers remain under real costs of living pressure. So true. But weirdly, the equity market, which has sold the rates pivot story for months and months, 
look straight past it. The S&P ASX 200 barely blinked when inflation hit screens on Wednesday. The way investors see it, inflation's trajectory is pretty good. The RBA likes where it's headed, but it is not about to pivot. September's numbers further bury any fears that were left about interest rate hikes. But that's about it. While trading desks and their economists try to drum up trading activity with their rate forecasts, what matters for investors is what is happening in the real world. Woolworths shows us it's tough in everyday Australia, and corporate profits more broadly are likely to be flat for the third straight financial year. But the ASX 200 is still near a record high, but more because it's following Wall Street's lead than anything happening in either Australian earnings or indeed interest rates. And Westpac's consumer confidence gauge actually bounced to the highest level since May 2022 recently in what the bank's head of Australian macro forecasting, Matthew Hassan, called the most promising update we've seen over the cycle to date. But let's be clear. Households are still very pessimistic, particularly when it comes to their family finances versus a year ago and big ticket spending. But an index tracking mortgage expectations has dropped by a third since July, suggesting households are no longer fearing further rate rises and are looking ahead to cuts. And NAB's business confidence survey also suggests a decent bounce to economic activity, with GDP growth likely to be running around 2% year on year. The business confidence also shows labour costs are running at around 7% on an as basis, keeping household incomes resilient even as inflation slowly fades. The RBA does expect a rebound in consumption in the later stages of the calendar year, as spending is given a boost by the July tax cuts. But could the surprising bounce in consumer confidence suggest households are going to hold up even better than the RBA expects? While a first rate cut in February does remain possible, with the consumer starting to feel more upbeat, wealth booming, strong population growth keeping housing costs sticky, and government spending too much, the RBA doesn't appear to have much room to move. Next year's RBA board meetings will not happen until mid-February, the end of March and late May. And that, of course, is a mile away from anyone struggling with debt. So higher for longer remains my call as financial pressures on many households continue to build. Something will break, but no Christmas rate cut present coming from Santa this year. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.